Hey guys, just in case if you're not confused enough about uh, all these JavaScript frameworks and how they work and which one to choose, I'm here to confuse even more. So today we're going to look at two famous frameworks, Angular and React, and we're going to do deep comparison. We're going to look at syntax, tooling, CLI, uh, testing, ease of use, speed, rendering engines, and more. And when it comes to frameworks, uh, it's a bit of a touchy subject that I understand. I have a friend, uh, whenever I say something bad about React, he gets really pissed off. And I understand, you know, we all have affinity towards our framework and it should be okay. So if you have such feelings, uh, feel free to comment in the comment section. But overall, keep an open mind. You might learn something new. And if you're trying to make a decision on which framework to choose, this is a great video for you. And if you know one framework and you're trying to figure out what the other one is uh, and the potential, uh, this is a great video for you as well. And welcome to Taxi Tutorials. So before we start, we need to understand what are we comparing? We need to compare Apple to Apple. So we're not comparing one version against the other, right? React and, and Angular, they're both kind of relatively new, about a few years old. Now you might say, hey, you know, I've used Angular like five years ago, but that was not what we are talking about. We are talking about component-based advanced framework. So we are looking at Angular 2 and plus, you know, two, four, five, six. And when it comes to uh, React, we are also comparing the latest React version. I have a great question for an interview. You can ask uh, the guy, what do you think of Angular 3 version and how it differs from Angular 2? And just let him answer. Okay, don't do that because that's cruel. Uh, those who know about the versioning, they know they get the joke. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is tooling. Tooling is very important when you make a decision which framework to use because it depends on what kind of team it is, right? If you have a smaller team and your programmers are not that capable, I think you want a framework which has all the tooling kind of built in. Uh, Angular is one of those where you have excellent tooling. It has CLI, which provides way more than, than you need. You can create projects, you can create component services, you can even create tests. Uh, whenever you create component, it automatically creates tests for you. And it also has, you know, Jasmine, Karma, Karma Protractor built in. So you can do even end-to-end -end testing. Templates were built for you so that you just have to write your tests. Okay. Angular has excellent tooling. And in the, late, uh, in the version 6, they even have uh, such that you can actually um, upgrade to a new version. You can just say, hey, upgrade, and then there is a process you have to go through, and it's an excellent feature as well. What about React? React always had, has been slower in terms of tooling. Uh, it, originally, it was just a, just a library, but now it has come along quite well. In the recent version, they introduced this Create React app, which is quite excellent. It's the simplest thing you ever see, and it just provides you just right structure for your project. And it's not that complex. For those who are very capable to find their own routing libraries and testing frameworks and all that stuff, React would be a right. Then you can pick and choose. Uh, but so it depends, you know, if you, if you want your team to have, you know, one uh, stop shop kind of situation where you just pick whatever the, 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 uh, the framework provides or you want them to, you know, make a decision and pick from various choices that are available outside. Uh, the, the drawback about the, the choices is that you might pick a wrong one for your uh, a framework and you might pay the price if you don't know how it exactly works. So that is a pitfall uh, with React. So React has rendering engine that is pretty fast. Um, and React also revamp everything uh, from this initial version, and they release what is called React Fiber, where they actually pretty much rewritten the whole thing. Uh, when it comes to Angular, uh, Angular was always lagging behind React, uh, but now they are they are catching up. They have uh, what is it called Angular IV, which is their version of rendering engine, and it's it's supposed to be really fast. I haven't done the 
uh, comparison because the problem is as soon as you start to compare the other one comes up with a better version and it just kind of get lost so they're both pretty fast maybe a few years ago i would worry about the speed when i when i compare when i compare frameworks but nowadays i sh you know they're pretty fast so uh, i should worry about other things instead of speed it's it's more like your cell phones now you know iphone 10 would do the same thing that iphone 11 does it has some few few knobs in here and there it's all about now uh, your comfort what about syntax this is where i feel that you know if you have great memory you should definitely go angular because it requires for you to remember quite a bit of syntax it's, some people who are already been using it they might say oh it's not that much but uh, for somebody new it's quite a bit you know you, it has this decorators and because it kind of mixes the html and javascript uh, it has those pipes and you have to remember all the pipes there is like app module where you have to import everything and if you have a service you remember you need to remember to add it to providers so there's lots of syntax for you to remember for me when i when i use angular i have to constantly use google uh, to you know search for syntax i think google is conspiring uh, against us because they want us to use more google that's why they're making angular this way react on the other end is quite simple um, i feel even jsx is it's quite simple a lot of people who coming from angular they don't like the the, the whole mixing of JavaScript, JSX, and all that stuff. But once you get a around it, it's pretty simple uh, because it tries to use mostly the pure JavaScript, right? The functional part of it. If you understand states and props um, and JSX, pretty much you have grasped the concept of, of React. So as for the syntax, the winner is, depends on how good user memory is. If you have really great memory, then angular is the winner because now you can memorize everything and you can do all the things smoothly uh, but if you don't have great memory but if you're a great javascript programmer then i think uh, react would be your choice uh, in terms of css you can use in angular you have the separate css file or you can write inside the template as well uh, as well but i think most of the people write uh, as a separate css file when it comes to uh, react you can have a separate CSS file but a lot of people try to use JavaScript object as a C as CSS which confuses a lot of people because ultimately you're doing a lot of inline CSS uh, which kind of going backwards for a lot of people the advantage of that inline is is because the CSS is global you can control at the elements level element levels but if you have a dedicated uh, CSS guy, then um, having a separate area for CSS make, makes much more sense because it's changing CSS is kind of dangerous, right? Because you can you can mess the whole page up by just making one tiny change, right? And now what about Redux? Um, React has Redux and Angular has RX.js. And now I think they have uh, um, called NGRX, which is kind of rx.jx with redux mix what about testing as i said earlier that angular has built-in jasmine karma protractor which means you can do end-to-end -end test um unit test and it actually creates every component you create you, using cli it actually creates a test file for you so that you just have to you know write your test inside so it reminds you you have a code coverage so you can actually look at the coverage and all that stuff uh, when it comes to react and by default it has i believe Jest as its um default testing environment and you, but you can choose others other ones as well like you can use mocha if you want to um, you have to do a little bit of configuration the the testing paradigm is also different when it comes to react because react has virtual dome so all your components are kind of like a, a JavaScript objects, right? So what Jest does, it, it allows you to create your component into, convert your component into this JavaScript objects. And then you can look at inside to see um, if you're expecting something, it's there or not. Now, in order to traverse to that JavaScript objects, um, there is a great tool available, uh, which was created by, Enzy uh, by Airbnb called Enzyme. Uh, it's 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 sort of like a, a jQuery for your you know react objects 
okay, which allows the selectors so that you can easily find things inside. For end-to-end -end testing, I believe there is a, one option that I already know that Nightmare is uh, pretty good. It's not a nightmare, but maybe for some of you it's a nightmare. So nightmare.js, I don't know why people name this libraries. Maybe they're running out of names anymore. So, <laughs> so nightmare.js uh, allows you to do end-to-end -end testing for React. So as a conclusion, I would say that you need to pick your framework based on how much do you know or your team knows. If you have a strong JavaScript skills in your team, then I think I would you should go with React because then they would enjoy it and, and they are free to do things. Uh, compared to if if it's a little bit weaker, I mean you can go if it's strong you can still go to Angular, uh, but they would prefer probably React more. But Angular, a lot of things are provided for you, so you have to do a lot of logics and you have to remember a lot of those syntax, which you can easily Google. And I also want to throw out that you know there are other frameworks like Ember, uh, which has great tooling, and I use it day to day to day basis, so that is also an excellent choice. And also you have Vue.js, which which is also another another lightweight framework and it's 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 going growing in popularity so if you don't like either angular and or react you can go with ember uh, or vue and if you don't like either of them then you know just become a back end engineer <laughs> what should i say hopefully this nightmare would end soon one day. And by the way, I have a tutorial series on Angular and React. I'll provide a playlist here somewhere uh, so you can check it out and uh, it will be also the, in the description. I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you did, please uh, like, subscribe and provide a constructive comment. And you can also support the channel via Patreon and you can follow me on the Twitter. My Twitter handle is techsit1 and my uh, Facebook handle is Texit. Uh, thank you.